If you are sending traffic to your Messenger bot and you're collecting data, whether you're asking questions, uh, whether it's a survey, you need to be exporting that information out into something like a Google Sheet to save you time. And I'm gonna show you how. Hey, what's up you guys? All right, so the very first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna log into our ManyChat account and uh, inside our ManyChat account, we're gonna find the flows tab and we're gonna go down to, uh, click on the flows tab and we're gonna create a new flow, all right? So I'm just gonna name this export data test, all right? Um, I'm just gonna ask three simple questions. Of course, your, your questions are gonna vary depending on what uh, information you wanna extract from the user. Um, I'm just gonna ask three simple questions, which is just one question, which is, um, it's going to be, where are you located? And then we're gonna ask for name, uh, or sorry, we're gonna ask for email and a phone number, okay? And we're gonna take that information out of ManyChat onto a Google Sheet um, and or you also show you the process of how to export it out to wherever you want to take it to okay using Xavier so the very first thing that we're gonna say is hey um, Angel or hey first name thank you for your interest all right so now we're gonna jump into um, asking our questions all right so we're gonna use a delay here and we're gonna use the user input option all right so this is um, the user input option is a simple way to take information um, and, and and save it into a custom field. All right, so let's just ask, where are you located? And now over here in the reply type section, uh, you have different reply types that you can um, accept. All right, so if you want to just use a free keyboard input, you can just use a text and have the end user just um, you know freely input uh, their their response. You can have it that way, or you can use the multiple choice option. Um, in this case, uh, you can do you know let's just say. Um, we're gonna we're gonna remove the skip button because we don't want the person to go ahead and skip that question. Uh, we're gonna skip that button and we're just gonna select our our responses. So let's just say um, let's just name of a few cities. Uh, I'm located in Phoenix, so I'm just gonna use my example. So let's say Mesa, uh, maybe Gilbert. Let's do. Um, Scott still and let's do one more let's do um, how to be all right so these are just different communities in my area um, again make sure that you remove the skip button otherwise that person will most likely go ahead and skip that question if you have that uh, if you have that as an option all right so just uh, go ahead and remove that and now where you want to um, where you want to save this response is to a custom field okay so in this section down here you want to save this response to a custom field and basically what that's going to do the custom field is just basically like a category um it's gonna we're gonna save this under the location category right so we're gonna label this location Oops, not even location we're gonna name this location okay new custom field so if you see that down there Right, so when we type in location, you're gonna see down here, you're gonna see new custom field. All right, so select that, create, and we're just gonna skip, uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and, and select okay. So now this response, which, whichever uh, option that they choose, it's gonna save under the custom field location, under the location custom field, all right? So that's what we wanna do. We wanna make sure that we have that and it saves under the the appropriate uh, custom field um, that matches the the question that you're asking, all right? So now we're gonna go ahead and so once they um, input their option, we're gonna put a, uh, input a delay, and now we're gonna use another user input, okay? So we're gonna ask for an email now, okay? So what is your email? Or you can ask, click the button, below to confirm your email because now we can have this all right if you're not aware with how this works uh, the reply type you can have email as a reply type all right remember take off the skip um, and what this is going to do is it's going to auto populate 
the email um, that they have selected for Facebook, all right? It's gonna auto-populate that email inside of here, inside of this little bubble, and all they're going to have to do is click the button to give you their email, all right? It's a very cool uh, little technique that you can that you can play with and you can use um, in your flow, all right? So now, of course, um, you guessed it right, we're gonna wanna save this, uh, response under the email custom field okay so we're gonna label this new custom field down here as email all right go ahead and create and now the email is gonna save under the email custom field all right so now the last one that we're gonna want to do is um, a phone number okay so now we're just gonna say click the button Hello to confirm your phone number. All right, now down over here, we're gonna select phone number, okay? Don't make the mistake of using number, all right? It's not going to work. It's not, It's this is gonna accept only a, a number response, all right? So this is just like a free response that if the user inputs a, a number, that's what it's gonna be looking for, okay? It's, the phone number is the one that we wanna use so that it auto populates their phone number and um, all they have to do is click that button for them to give you their phone number. And of course, we're gonna save this under the phone number or, or we're gonna label this phone number uh, for the custom field, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and create and now we're gonna move forward. Um, here is how we're going to uh, let Zapier know when to trigger so that it can pull the information, all right? So when you see, when you open up and you click on this bubble, um, you're gonna see uh, actions on successful input, all right? So we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna click that button there and we're gonna set an action at the very end of our, our survey, okay? Make sure that however many questions you have, let's say you have five questions, at the very end of the fifth question, you know, on the on the last question, you um, input this action so that it triggers at the very end. Okay, don't put this action up at the at the beginning. Otherwise, it's only gonna extract um, or it's gonna trigger and it's only gonna extract the first question and then you're gonna leave out the remaining questions. Okay, so make sure that um, wherever you want it, uh, Zapier to trigger and pull the information, you have it on the on the very last question at the very end. Okay. So now we're gonna add a tag. Um, what, whatever tag you wanna label this as, um, it's totally up to you. Just make sure that you can recognize it and you know which one it is um, when, you, when you're looking for it inside of Zapier, okay? So I'm just gonna say, this is called uh, completed um, new customer survey. All right. So this is when when they when they go through this flow at the very end of this they're gonna get tagged that they completed the new customer survey and that's gonna let me know that they completed it and it's also gonna let Zapier know that they completed this entire um, this entire uh, survey right here okay so now we can just leave this off with um, okay thank you we'll be in touch. Okay. So now um, we're gonna go ahead and publish this. And now we're gonna head over to our Google Sheet, okay? So we need to set up a Google Sheet, all right? So if you, you, if you have a Google account, you're gonna wanna go in and you're gonna set, uh, open up a new Google Sheet. And now we're going to um, list our headers, okay? So of course, we are going to collect name, all right? So you need to have these headers in order for information to be uh, input into your Google Sheet, okay? so. We are collecting name, uh, location, right? We asked for location, we asked for email, and we also asked for phone number. Um, a few other tips that I always recommend you uh, input inside of here is to have the user ID, okay? You want to collect these user IDs because these user IDs are super important, um, super valuable to you. Um, you can use these user IDs, you can pull all these user IDs, let's say you have 50 subscribers, you know, 50 um, leads inside of this Google Sheet, you can take all these user IDs, uh, export or sorry, uh, import them into Facebook, 
and now you can retarget them uh, with with the with the more specific message. Okay, so these user IDs are going to be super important, super valuable for you uh, to have. Okay, so make sure that you always input that column for the user ID. All right, so now we're going to jump over to Zapier. Okay, first thing that we're going to want to do is the first step in, in, in Zapier is always going to be your trigger button. Okay. It's always going to be the very first step. So think about uh, where the data is coming from. And now the rest of the steps are going to be where you want to take that data to. So where is this data coming from? It's going to be coming from ManyChat. All right. It's going to be the very first step. So let's type in ManyChat and we're going to find ManyChat. All right. Um, now we have some different options here. Okay. The, uh, we're going to be looking for new tag user. All right. So if you remember at the very end of this survey, we are tagging them completed new customer survey. That's letting us, that's letting me know that they completed it. And that's also going to let Zapier know uh, when to trigger and when that person completed the survey. Okay. So we're going to select new tag user. All right. New tag user. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and find my page. Always test. Make sure that it's, that it's good and it has a strong connection. And now we're gonna look for that tag, okay? So here it is, complete a new customer survey, all right? That's when uh, Zapier is going to trigger and send the information into your Google Sheet. Okay, so it's just gonna wait for an example. All right, so it's, it's giving us an error. The reason why is because um, I have not gone through it myself. So it needs to pick up some data. There isn't any data there right now. I'm actually just gonna walk you through how that works. Uh, so you can also see um, how the information auto-populates into, um, into, uh, into Messenger, okay? So let's see. Here it is right here. So hey, th hey Angel, thank you for your interest. Where are you located? All right, so I am located in Otuki. Next question is click the button below to confirm your email. So you see that right there, um, it auto populates into messenger. And now all I have to do is click this, uh, this button right here, and it's going to give, um, messenger my email and now click the button down below to confirm your phone number. See that right there. That's my phone number. And now it's going to auto populate into there. And all I have to do is click the button. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. We'll be in touch. So now, Now we're gonna try this again. And now I have some data to pull. Okay, so there it is. It pulls my information, um, it pulled my email, and it pulled my phone number right there. Okay. So if you get that error, uh, just keep in mind that you have to go and test it yourself or give it some data to pull um, from any chat. Okay, so we have our first trigger. Now we have our next step, which is where do we wanna take this data to? We are taking it to Google Sheet, okay? So Google Sheet, there it is, the very first one that popped up. And now we're gonna select Create Spreadsheet Row, all right? Save and continue, and um, connect to the Google account where you have the Google Sheet set up. That's the account that I have it set up in. And now we're gonna find our spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet that I have labeled is called Test Sheet, and the worksheet down below is called Export Data. All right, so we're gonna look for the, the worksheet called or spreadsheet called test sheet. There it is right there, okay? And now we're gonna find export data, there it is. And so this is the reason why you need to have these headers so that you can have these fields to input the data into, all right? So now we're gonna find, um, when, you, when you head over, uh, over to the right side, these little squares, these little boxes right here, is where the data is stored, okay? Or where you can pull your data from, all right? Um, it's pull this information here is pulling it from ManyChat, which is the very first trigger. And now all it is from here is just plug and play, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna put in a full name, which is the username right here. And now we're gonna find the custom fields, uh, which if you remember is location, all right? So let's find location. There it is, user custom field location. And I selected Awatuki, if you remember that. And if we scroll down a little further, um, here is the custom field email. If we continue scrolling a little further, we're gonna find the custom field phone number. 
and then um, and then we'll have the very last user ID option. Okay, so there it is, user custom field phone number. And now um, to find the user ID, it's right there. So you have first name, last name, and then you have the user ID. Okay, so now we're gonna continue. And after this, we are going to send the test over to the Google Sheet. Okay, so when we hit this button, it sends the test. And now we're gonna head over to Google Sheet and there it is, okay? So there's all the information that it extracted when I went through this flow um, and, and sent it over to the Google Sheet. All right, so there it is, you guys. Very simple process. All you need to make this happen is ManyChat, a Google Sheet, and of course, Zapier to put it all together. All right, this is gonna save you tons of time rather than having to log into your desktop, log into ManyChat, and then having to scroll, find the customer, scroll through the information that they gave you, and by that time, you've wasted tons of time, okay? Time is our most valuable asset. Use it wisely. Another thing that I would suggest is to download the Google Sheets app. That way you can access it right from your phone and it saves you tons of time. If you need to access the data, you click the button, you log into the, uh, the Google Sheet app and you can access it there. So there it is you guys, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you soon.